Let's say you're trying to balance your time between work and studying. Your goal is to maximize your productive hours. And like every good math problem, we'll do some labeling and come up with some assumptions. Let's use the variable w to represent the number of hours you spend at work each week. We'll use the variable s for the number of hours you spend studying each week. Finally, we'll let p represent the number of productive hours in a week. We want to maximize p, and p is made up of w and s. We'll assume p equals w, in other words, every working hour is a productive hour, plus 0.8s. In other words, every studying hour is 0.8 productive hours. Why the 0.8? Again, it's just an assumption, but this takes care of things like breaks and, if we're being honest, some time spent scrolling on the internet. Our assumptions are also subject to some constraints. There are only so many hours in a week. For our example, let's assume we're only focusing on weekdays so we can take out the weekend hours. We're assuming eight hours of sleep every night, take those out. We'll also remove some personal time and other tasks. Our assumption here is that we have 60 hours to split between work and study. In other words, W plus S is less than or equal to 60. In our made-up example, we'll also assume that your job is very flexible. Essentially that you can pick your own working hours, subject to you at least working 10 hours a week. It's reasonable that your employer might not keep you on the payroll if you don't want to work at least 10 hours a week. Also, we're saying you can't work more than 40 hours a week. This is due to overtime restrictions. In other words, our constraint inequality is that W has to be greater than or equal to 10, less than or equal to 40. All of these assumptions are enough if you have absolutely no preference in studying versus work and aren't subject to any kind of stress or burnout from either of them. But if you're someone like me who prefers to study a little bit more than going to work, you might find one more stressful than the other, and you might burn out quicker if you're doing one much more than the other as well. Ideally, we want to keep our plan going for the long term, and we want to constrain our burnout. We'll make another assumption here that S plus 2W is less than or equal to 80. This is kind of like saying I get twice as burnout working at my job as I do studying, and this I want to keep less than this number 80. We'll just call it a burnout number, but you could change it based on your personal preference. By the way, it's sort of implied that S and W both have to be at least zero. It doesn't make sense to spend any negative time studying or working, at least in the context of our problem. Now that we have all the constraints, the nice thing is we can graph them all together and come up with our so-called feasibility region. Looking at our WS plane, we only need to worry about positive values for W and S. That's the first quadrant. Let's graph W between 10 and 40. We only had 60 total hours. Remember, that was the inequality W plus S is less than or equal to 60. Or we could say S is less than or equal to 60 minus W. Also, our burnout inequality, we could write as S is less than or equal to 80 minus 2W. And if we focus in on the intersection of all of these solutions, we have our so-called feasibility region. All the points in this region are the values that make sense in the context of our constraints. In other words, any point in here would fit our plan. However, what we're most interested in is maximizing our productivity. This productivity function we initially came up with is sometimes called the objective function, and what the theory of linear programming tells us is that this function is maximized or optimized at the corner points of our feasibility region. All of the corner points or vertices of this region 
are possible solutions to our question. It's easy enough to find these points using technology, just remembering that the first coordinate represents the number of working hours, the second coordinate represents the number of study hours. What we can do is plug all of these points into our productivity function and see which one outputs the largest number. Although some of them you clearly probably would eliminate just by looking at them, others you really do have to check to see which one is larger. And according to our constraints, this point gives us the solution of working 20 hours, studying 40 hours, and this is the most productive we can be according to our assumptions and constraints. And as I've mentioned, you can adjust these numbers and get very different solutions depending on the situation you're working with. Crying out for more optimal mathematical decision making, you'll really need to check out this video. It's a subtle paradox that I think everyone should be able to navigate. I'll see you in that one.